Cybersecurity looks intense, right? Like it needs hours of free time, full focus, five cups of coffee, and a hoodie. But what if I told you, you can actually make really solid progress even if your schedule is packed, your job chaotic, or you're just generally tired. Today, I want to walk you through how to study cybersecurity even when you're busy. And a quick spoiler, it's nothing to do with motivation. It's actually about building systems that make learning kind of inevitable. So grab a tea or a coffee or whatever you've got nearby and let's dive in. So first up, we need to talk about a mindset shift. It's easy to look at others and see what sets are doing and the posts that they've written and about how they just spent all night reversing something. But more often than not, you're just getting social media highlights for a collective rather than an individual. And it's bad enough comparing yourself to others. Imagine comparing yourself to a whole industry of people. So what we need to do is take a step back and think about what can we achieve by being more systematic and intentional and honestly, everyone else can simply jog on. We don't need to be comparing ourselves to anyone and this is something that I really think will help if you have ongoing imposter syndrome or feel like you're lagging behind the crowd. You're simply not. But let's talk about becoming more systematic and this mostly boils down to building a system that fits into your day naturally and we can ease ourselves into it with our first rule and that is the 30 minute rule. So literally everybody can find 30 minutes in their day and it's an Enough time to spend five minutes spinning up your VM or logging into something and then getting 25 minutes of uninterrupted study time. But the real trick here is to have something ready to go. It could be a learning path or a project you're working on and you need to minimize the setup time and maximize the learning time and also find a slot in your day and commit to it. I used to arrive two hours early for work, book a meeting room and I studied in there every single day of the week. But now I work from home and so I alternate between studying and going to the gym at lunchtime. So Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, I'm studying and Tuesdays and Thursdays, I head to the gym. I know this isn't the everyday approach that I mentioned before, but over time, your system will be tweaked and changed. And mine has, of course, been changed to suit me and yours will change to suit you. The real key is to make a simple, repeatable habit though. Next, I want to talk about study triggers. So remember before that I said I booked a meeting room and during that time I studied? The fact that I had a specific space made a huge difference. If I sat at my desk, I would get distracted with emails and Teams messages and work. And honestly, you end up just kidding yourself into thinking that you did something when really you achieved very little. Now, your trigger can actually be anything you already do. Some people refer to these as cornerstone habits that other habits can be built on, but in the interest of keeping it simple, if you make coffee every day at 8am, you could then open the lid of your laptop and do 30 minutes of studying. If you have kids and need to do the school run and then get to work, no problem. At 12 o'clock, when your lunch break starts, block your calendar and do 30 minutes of studying before or after eating your lunch. Maybe you can do it on the train if you can get a table seat before you pick up your kids or after your kids go to bed. Whatever it is, just make sure the trigger you have is something consistent. In today's digital landscape, practical skills are key. TCM Security Academy offers training that's rooted in real world application. Learn real world skills from industry experts that will teach you hands-on skills that will prepare you for any cyber challenge. Transform theory into practice at academy.tcm-sec.com. So now I want to move on to learning spaces. I think if you've ever tried to improve your sleep and done some research around it, then you'll know that your bed needs to be a place where you sleep and not a place where you watch TV and play games on your phone and send reels, etc., etc. Same goes for studying. If you have a space or a device or some kind of setup that tells your brain, okay, it's time to study, then it's going to be much easier to settle in and get the work done. Reducing friction is really important here and there are a a lot of factors that dictate how and when we can study but once again if you can make it something consistent for example I have a second desk behind me that I use for a few different things for example when I'm trying to do more creative problem solving like planning the architecture of a complex web app or if I want to do some reading now I think for a lot of people the easiest way to separate your space is if you have a laptop just change rooms and make that the study habit but of course I get that this learning space concept is going to be different 
different for everyone because we all have different situations and space available to us. But even just going outside to a coffee shop can really help you eliminate distracting habits that you might have at home. And this can help you stay on task. Now, I also want to share with those of you who are busy and have a hectic or choppy schedule, the idea of finding time in dead zones in your day. It might just be 15 minutes, but if you have something that you're studying that is easily accessible, then try and make it the learning default option in these awkward transition moments instead of popping open something like Instagram. You'd be surprised how many blog posts or walkthroughs you can get through if you simply make an effort to switch over your default behavior when you open your phone. Moving on, let's talk about focus. And I think this is something that I'm reasonably good at. Some people call it flow. Others say it's a form of mindfulness when you're fully zoned in on a single task. But whatever it is, it takes a little bit of practice to get into. And also, I think it's a finite resource. Now, if you want a deeper dive into how to get into a flow state when you're writing code or studying, then let me know down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But the most important thing is that when you sit down to focus on something, regardless of whether or not you fall into this kind of work state, is to switch off your notifications or better yet, leave your phone in another room on silence, out of sight and out of mind. You can also mute the notifications on your laptop or simply close Slack, Teams or whatever it is that you're using to communicate with your team. And remember that your study time is yours and no one else's, so don't let anything interrupt it. Now, speaking of notifications, this might turn into a long run, so sorry about that. But probably the single best thing I did to improve my life in terms of health and focus and productivity is that my phone basically lives on silence. So from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. at night, it doesn't make any sound or vibration at all, no notifications. And during the day, only phone calls will actually make it vibrate. So if it's an emergency, then yes, people can call me. But if it's a text, then I will reply later once I see it, which is the whole point of it text message. In particular, muting group chats is a really, really big one, especially since my parents retired and in my family chat, I'm getting pretty much hourly updates of their long walks with the dog. And I also get constant reels from the group of friends that I surf with. So the TLDR here is that you're not really missing anything. You shouldn't have a five second SLA to anyone and you can interact with these things on your own terms when it's not taking away from what you really want to be doing in your life. Life. And if you really need to be contactable at a moment's notice by certain individuals or by your team, then that's okay. Just mute everything else. And no excuses if you have kids. It's 2025. You can selectively choose who or what is important enough to interrupt your time. And the list of these people should be as short as possible. And that's my rant over about notifications. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about active learning, which is why all of our courses at TCM have labs and exercises because this is where you actually improve and build applicable skills. And this is pretty straightforward. If you watch a video, you need to try and recreate it or follow along in some way. If it's a walkthrough for a CTF, then go and do that CTF after you've watched the video. And if it's a technical blog post on a particular attack, then try it against a bug bounty target or write a small app that emulates the issue. Active learning is really, really important. And even if you never touch the app or a scripts that you threw together ever again, put it on your GitHub and enjoy having a thousand and one things to talk about during your next interview. Finally, I wanted to talk about momentum and Heath actually talked about this in one of his videos and I decided to consciously make an effort to create momentum in my work day. And it's a technique that really works. Committing to something like just five minutes usually means that you're going to continue and then hit your 30 minutes of study time. And then of course, doing this day after day, it gets easier and easier. And getting started with a small task like opening your laptop or spinning up a VM or something like this can be a really good first step. And then once you're there, it's a lot easier to continue. So keep it small and consistent at first, and you'll be surprised how quickly you can build up momentum in your day and really achieve the things that you want to achieve. And that's it for this video. If there are specific topics you want me to dive deeper into, then let me know down in the comments below and I will catch you next time.